Mixing this record was quite a task. Whenever you have a lot of parts, a lot of instruments, a lot of voices, you can get to the point of no return. And so therefore you have to start weeding out things that are not really helping the mix. Um, I don't mind recording more than I need to, uh, especially if somebody's got a plethora of uh, ideas. For example, with the vocal harmonies, I think we probably, in a lot of these songs, had every possible harmony you could have, <laughs> just, to, just to see if it would work, see, see how it would work. But obviously, in most cases, we didn't use all of the, the, the vocals, all the harmonies, because it was just overkill. Um, so, but it's still quite a challenge. You may have, you know, 24 tracks full of just vocals, all different harmonies. Typically, um, most harmonies I would triple track or maybe even four sometimes. And then other ones I'd only have two. Um, so they all have different timbers. But that would take quite a lot of time to find the right balance of the harmony to start with. And of course, the more you add, sonically it starts to get very muddy. So you've got to be very careful um, how you treat each, let's say, bank of uh, harmonies. The higher harmonies will probably need some different EQ to the lower harmonies, for example. Um, so it takes a long time to put all this together. And then, of course, string. Uh, some, on some of the songs, uh, Escape the Maze, for example, we actually have an orchestra in uh, Abbey Road Studios. Um, and that was, uh, that was recorded over in London. And I was sent the stems and suddenly there's another six faders to add into this mix of a very full sound. Um, the thing I've enjoyed about recording this record is I've been able to use a lot of my early experiences, both as a, as a session musician in London and also as an engineer uh, working with uh, people like Mike Oldfield. Uh, Mike's albums were always very dense. We had a lot of instruments. Um, we only had 24 tracks in those days, uh, which means actually 23 tracks because one track was a uh, Simti track for sync. Um, but uh, what we used to do in those days, would we would bounce from a couple of tracks, uh, a little bit like the old uh, EMI recordings of the Beatles. Um, if you wanted an overdub, you had to bounce from one tape machine to another whilst playing a live part. So, and I used to do that as a kid with my, uh, my mum had two Revox G36 tape machines. And uh, so I used to play with these all the time and bouncing and then adding something else. And it was great fun. Um, as track counts got bigger, and we went from quarter inch tape to half inch to one inch to two inch. Uh, the maximum was actually a 32 track machine. Uh, I believe it was a Telefunken. Um, but most of the time we were using 24 track. So you'd have to bounce, let's say, all the vocals, which are maybe eight tracks, down to two tracks, and then add more vocals, and then bounce again. And um, Today with Pro Tools, we have a gazillion tracks to play with, which is great, but sometimes can be a curse as well, because um, there's always somebody saying, let's add something more. <laughs> um, but the great thing about my, the, my early experiences was I did a lot of sessions where it was rhythm section and orchestra. And I would always go into the control room and I, I got to know all the engineers in London. And uh, I was just fascinated by the whole recording process. and trying to put together a big orchestra and a rock group is is a very difficult thing first of all it's very difficult to record live luckily for this project we didn't have to do that but still you have to mix it and that takes a lot of doing i, I have to say it's difficult it's not easy especially if you don't do it all the time and i certainly don't do that all the time but it was great to be able to use the experience um, that I had in the, in the 70s of seeing that done and seeing how the, uh, the engineer would work and how he would balance the orchestra and the rhythm section. 
and um, that, I think that really helped mixing this record. I was able to bring in some techniques from the analog world, from the 70s, into today's world, which is all digital, um, but I still think very analog. <laughs>